Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Like anything else that's complicated is a matter of teamwork and teamwork is a matter of understanding the next fellow in today's story the flying Casey's you'll meet two men who were born twins but waited a long time to develop that understanding our curtain rises in just a moment but first here's important news for all ex servicemen you may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you realize the Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. For full details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Remember, you've earned credits toward a fine retirement in the service, so protect your initial investment as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The Flying Casey's. Try to think back, way back to the time when you were a kid. Well, I don't mean five or six, but as early as you can remember. Now, you may insist it's my imagination, but I'm convinced I can remember the first words I ever heard. I remember being conscious of two voices. We must have been in a baby carriage, my twin brother Bob and I. And Pop probably had us out for an airing. And there was this woman's voice, and I'm sure it said, Oh, isn't that dog-haired one adorable? And I'm positive Pop said, oh, The blonde one is much better looking. Maybe I only imagine I heard it. It could be. But thinking of Bob and I growing older, my memory, of course, becomes more accurate. Mom passed away while we were still infants, and Pop had the raising of us. Pop was, and still is, the greatest guy in the world. I know he loved both of us equally well. I guess he just never knew how to show it, that's all. We were, and we still are, Pop's whole life. Oh, he bragged about us, his two Casey boys, the way other men brag about their golf scores. I guess he just bragged about one of us a little bit more than the other. Pop would never tell me to do anything without comparing me to Bob and most of the time, comparing me unfavorably. What's the matter with you, Ed? Why can't you be more like your brother Bob, huh? The propeller of an old World War I Jenny hung over the mantelpiece in our home. Pop had been a pilot in those ancient days of flying, and all we ever talked about in our house was flying. Some dads would take their kids to a ball game. Our Pop would take us to an airfield. Hey, look up there. That's a P-40. She can do over 300 and... I'd say she's the greatest fighter in the world. But you want to know something? Five, ten years from now, she'll be obsolete. When you kids become pilots, you'll fly planes twice as fast. Well, naturally, we both wanted to be pilots. But even in those days, there was a feeling that I would never make it. You see, Bob's marks in school were always higher than mine. He was on top of the class while I barely pulled through. I knew the answers to the questions, but I always had trouble writing them down. I guess I was trying too hard. Maybe I wanted to show Pop I was as smart as Bob, but the harder I tried, the worse it became. So after a while, I, I guess I just stopped trying. What's the matter with you, Ed? You'll never get into cadets. You're just not a student, that's all. Look at Bob. First prize in math and science. And that's how it was. Look at Bob. Look at Bob. I, I guess the climax came one night when Bob and I were supposed to go to a basketball game. Only I had a headache and I stayed home. Pop didn't know it. He thought there was no one home that night when he came in with an old friend of his. I never told him I overheard the conversation. 
Uh, a little more, Charlie. No, thanks. Yeah, it's been a rough day at the plant. Hey, you want to slow down a little. You're not getting any younger. Tell me, uh, boys are getting out of high school this June. Any plans? Well, eventually Bob will make Air Force cadets. Yeah, if he doesn't, who will, huh? How about Ed? Ed? No, no, I'm afraid not. I guess he could qualify physically, but the other stuff would knock him out. Yeah, Bob's always been the smart one, since they were little kids. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the way it goes. Well, I want Bob to have a couple of years of college under his belt first. It'll make cadets easier for him. Uh, the only thing is, well, how can I send Bob and not Ed? Yeah, yeah, that could be a problem. You look at Ed's marks, and you talk to his teachers, and they tell you he isn't college material, but still, I, I want him to have his chance. And yet... Uh, oh, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know. It's the money, too. I could send one and handle it somehow, but both of them, well, that would be a tough proposition. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Charlie. Mm, well, if there's anything I can do... I was thinking of taking on a little extra work. Maybe you could use someone to help with the books at night, Charlie, or if you know of some other people. Well, I, I could give you some extra work, Casey, but uh, I, I hate to see you overdo it. Now, let me worry about that. I didn't feel much like going to sleep after that. Long after Bob had come home, I just lay there with my eyes closed, thinking. And the following morning at breakfast, I said to Pop, Say, Pop... You think Charlie Smith would give me a job at his garage? Uh, for the summer? Why not? No, no, I don't mean for the summer, Pop. I've been thinking. I probably couldn't get into college anyhow, and even if I did, it'd be a waste of time. I'd like to own a service station of my own one day. I might as well start by learning the business. Eddie, I... Uh, I thought you always wanted to become a pilot. Oh, when you're a kid, you want to become a lot of things. I, I couldn't become a pilot, Pop. I might as well start becoming practical. So I went to work and Bob went to the State University. I was pretty happy until the day Bob finished school and went into cadets. I knew then the Air Force just wasn't some kid ambition with me. I knew it was something I really wanted. Bob breezed through cadet school and got his wings. From then on, it became very tough with me. I couldn't hear an airplane overhead without stopping my work and looking up. Finally, I said to myself, okay, I can't fly him, but I'm going to be a part of him anyhow. I quit my job and I enlisted. I finally became a mechanic on bombers. I never got off the ground, but at least there was satisfaction in knowing the bombers did because of me. In part, Pop never said anything about it, but he wasn't too pleased. After all, he had one son who flew bombers and another who only serviced them. Well, I was happy anyhow. At least I thought I was. Besides, I had just met Mary Henderson. Mary had a job in the finance office at the base. It wasn't six months before we knew this was really it. There was only one little thing that bothered Mary. You want to dance? Oh, let's sit this one out. Okay. Let's talk. Oh, swell. Let's talk about you. I'd rather talk about you. Ed, we've known each other for quite a while now, and you know something? You don't speak about your family. Well, you know about my family. Well, I know you've got a father and a twin brother, but... I don't know anything about them. Uh, what's there to tell? Well, I don't know. I've told you about my brother, Jim. How we were kids together and the things we used to do. The places we went to. Things like that. Well, Bob and Pop and I, we just, we got along okay. We had fun. There's nothing more to tell. Well, I'd like to meet them. Well, Bob's a sack man, too. He's at a base in England now, and Pop... He's home working. Well, when was the last time you saw your father? Well, I guess that was uh, two years ago. Well, didn't you see him last Christmas? No, no, we were all going to get together, but Bob was just getting ready to go overseas and he couldn't leave the East Coast, so Pop went up to see him. Well, I think I should at least meet my future father-in-law. Well, you will, honey. Now, Pop said something about having to come down this way on a business trip, so maybe he'll drop by. Well, what do you mean, maybe he'll drop by? I mean, if he has time, he'll drop off. Uh, look, what do you say we dance? Anyhow, Pop did make arrangements to visit me. And the day he was due, Mary and I made big plans to take him out to dinner. Ed, you'll never guess who came into town. My brother, Jim. Oh, that's swell. 
Bring him along. Oh, he's dying to meet you. He wants to see this guy his kid sister's marrying. Uh-oh. You think I'll pass inspection? No, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about me. After all, I'm going to meet your father. You think I'll pass inspection? Oh, with flying colors. Well, he's due at the station in ten minutes now. Uh, we'll be right over, honey. Well, Bob was not only the best student in the class, but he was quite an athlete, too. Ed, when you and Bob were freshmen at high school, didn't the football coach tear his hair out because Bob wouldn't be eligible to play for another year? Uh, how did, uh, did you play football, too, Ed? Uh, no, no, Jim, Ed didn't make the team, but Bob was all-state high school halfback. Oh, modest kid, too. Bob never used to brag, did he, Ed? No. Yes, sir, I'm proud of that boy. Well, uh, Mr. Casey, uh... How was Ed as a kid? Well, I'll tell you one thing about Ed. He was never jealous. Some kids are, but Ed never. You know, Bob is one of the very few kids who found out what he wanted to do early in life and stuck to it. Always wanted to fly, just like me. He made it. He made the Air Force. Well, Ed made the Air Force, too. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. But I'm glad Bob's flying the way I did. I was talking to Ed about his job. I couldn't make head or tail about it. It was different in my day. We had crates made out of wood and wire. Instruments? <laughs> I'll tell you what we had. A compass, an airspeed indicator, an altimeter, if it worked, and instinct. We flew by the seat of our pants. I guess that's the one thing Bob got from me. Instinct. Well, Mr. Casey, it's been a long time since you flew a military aircraft. And I guess maybe you forgot what it was really like. I guess you think your son Bob is more important to the Air Force than Ed is. Well, I... Uh... Or I am, for that matter. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Jim. Pop never said... Now, look, and... look. Ed is a mechanic. Without him, the planes don't get off the ground. Now, I'm an in-flight refueling specialist. I fly, but I'm not a pilot. I refuel planes like the one your son Bob flies while they're in the air. We're a team, me, Ed, and Bob. I don't care who he is. All that one man in the Air Force can do is just one small part of the job. <laughs> and I'm just as proud of my job as anyone else. Oh, well, I, uh... I, I didn't mean to low-rate anybody. Certainly, you fellows are important. You, well, I, I didn't mean to say... Uh, well, uh, my gosh, it's, it's getting late, isn't it? I have to make that train. Pop really did have to make a train. He had a business engagement 100 miles away the next morning. And he was glad to meet Mary and Jim. He said he approved of my choice. I, I drove him back to the station as we waited for the train... I could see that Pop was unusually quiet. Ed, we've only got a couple of minutes, and, uh, well, maybe this isn't the time to talk about it. What's that, Pop? Ed, I... I saw something tonight. Your girl, her brother... Well, just talking to them made me realize it. I... Ed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about a lot of things. Bob was always my favorite. He still is, Pop. He always seemed smarter and more talented, but maybe that was because I helped bring it out of him. Maybe I had more patience with him than with you. Ed, you're doing all right, aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. I got a good job. I get along fine in my outfit. I'm getting married. <laughs> She's a swell girl. At least that turned out okay, didn't it? You're happy, aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so, aren't you? Sure, sure, I'm happy, Pop. You're, you're going to miss your train. No, Ed. Tell me. So that you better make your train, Pop. Ed, I, I, I can't leave you like Why this. Why not, Pop? Pop? I've been like this all my life. It'll be like this as long as I live. So long, Pop, and, and give my best to Bob. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Flying Casey's. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. When you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, men, how about those years you invested in the service, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? 
you can make those years pay off in big dividends today by becoming a member of the United States Air Force. Yes, if you've been in any of the armed forces, you may be eligible to enlist in the Air Force in a grade that will be a pleasant surprise. You see, the Air Force needs men skilled in certain important fields, and you may be just such a man. If so, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your previous service experience to work and to collect on those credits you've earned toward comfortable retirement. Your Air Force recruiter has a folder full of details, so write or visit him right away. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder, and you'll know why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Flying Casey's. Come in. Your dad make his train? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did Jim leave yet? No. Uh, he was hoping you'd drop by. Jim and I were talking about you all this time. Oh, no wonder my ears were burning. Hi, Ed. How about some coffee? No, no. It keeps me up. Well, maybe you ought to stay up once in a while and, and do some thinking. About what? About what's always been bothering you. What makes you think something's been bothering me? Look, Jim and I met your father tonight, remember? Your brother sounds like quite the all-American boy. Why didn't you ever go out for cadets, Ed? Well, it was kind of taken for granted. I could never make it. Besides, being realistic, Pop wanted Bob to go to college, and so I got a job. You want to fly, don't you? Hey, look, what's this all about? Well, let's say just for the sake of argument that I'm a, a troublemaker, that everything I'm saying isn't true, so I'm going to instigate. I'm going to tell you you're unhappy. I'm going to tell you that since you were old enough to walk, you wanted to fly. I'll tell you further, you'll never be happy until you've got a job that puts you in the air. Now, if none of this is true, we can drop it. All right, for the sake of argument, let's say it's true. Let's say I do want to fly. Now, let's be realistic. It's too late in the game for me to become a pilot. Jim flies. He's not a pilot. Look, I only know what Mary's told me about you and what I've seen for myself. I think you've got a lot on the ball. I think you've been low-rating yourself long enough. I got a job. I'm a boom operator. You know what that is? I fly in the tanker. I, I handle the boom that sends the equipment into the plane we're refueling. I handle the hookup. I'm the guy who runs the job. From the minute we make contact till the refueling is over, the whole operation is my baby. Yeah, that sounds like something. It is something. And I think it's something you'd like. Now, maybe you're scared, Ed. Maybe because you never got what you wanted all your life, you're scared to try. That's how it's always been, hasn't it? You sat back and let Bob do it. Well, look, Jim, suppose I don't make it. Well, how do you know if you don't try? Sure. Bob got all the advantages. But maybe a lot of it is your fault. Maybe you gave up too soon and too easily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe I did. Bob won't be in school with you. He won't be competing with you. Nobody will be comparing the two of you. Look, Mary, if I make a thing like this... What do you mean, if? Oh, what I mean is... No, I, I'll be... I, I'd be reassigned. Oh, well, don't you think you're worth going along with? Aren't you important enough for me to follow you wherever you're stationed? Look, forgetting who you are personally, I'll let you in on a little secret. You're going to be a boom operator. And us boom operators are important guys in the Air Force. It was like opening all the doors and windows of a stuffy old house and letting in the fresh air. I wanted this job. I wanted to apply and pass the physicals and take the course and be assigned. I wanted to fly. Now I had to wait it out. First I made the application, then I waited, and then I took the physicals, and then I waited. And then they sent me to school at Shepherd. I thought I'd run into Jim there, but he'd been transferred out. The ground phase of our training was over quickly. The next thing I now knew... here, you see the ship you'll be flying. Uh, you there, Casey. What's its name? Uh, the KC-97, Sergeant. That's right. The KC-97. With your name, you should never forget that. She's a tanker, propeller-driven. Uh, oh, you, uh, you have a question up, Casey? Well, I, I was going to ask, it's a slow ship, especially when the tanks are full. Now, we'll be refueling jets that fly much faster. Is there a set speed that both planes have to fly during this operation? That's the key question, Casey. Maintaining the relationship of your plane to the one you're refueling. One's a slow ship, the other is much faster. Your ship is becoming lighter as she gives up fuel. The other one is becoming heavier as she takes it on. 
Well, you're the one who's working the boom. You're the one who decides how much speed is needed and when. Airspeed? Airspeed, 150. Steady at 150. I'm going to make the hook up now. Oh, hold it, Casey. Hold it. You're starting too soon. You're going to miss her. Start again. Airspeed? 150. Hold her steady. You're doing fine, boy. This hookup is the roughest part of it. That's it. Don't be scared. Make your move. We're steady. She's steady. That's it. That's it. You got her. Okay, fella, take over. I didn't tell Pop I was a boom operator until I actually became one. And the day Pop got my letter, he hopped on a plane and came out to the base to see me. He said it was the happiest day of his life, and, and somehow I believed him. Mary and I planned to get married as soon as I found out where my first assignment would be. I didn't have long to wait. It was overseas. A bomber base in England. The minute I heard the word England, I knew which base it was going to be. Which base it had to be. And then all the joy, all the elation I'd felt in my new job seemed to evaporate. Once again, I'd be with Bob, where we'd be compared, where I'd be the back number. I never was as weighed down by my brother as much as I was the day I learned I was going to be assigned to his base. But I had my orders, and there was no help for it. So a week later, I was in England, and I reported to the base. I wished I'd never heard of in-flight refueling and boom operating. I wished I'd remained in my old assignment where I could go on my way and Bob could go his. In a few months, Mary would be joining me here, and everything she dreaded about the relationship between Bob and me would be true. Only here it would be worse. We'd be part of a small community overseas, a tightly knit group. Well, I figured I was born unlucky. I might just as well go on living unlucky. I walked into the personnel office to report for duty. Sergeant Major looked at me and rubbed his eyes. What the? Staff Sergeant Casey reporting for duty, Sergeant. Here are my orders. Yeah. For a minute there, you had me going. I said to myself, Lieutenant Casey, what are you doing in an enlisted man's uniform? You guys must be twin brothers. We are. That's great. I got to tell Lieutenant Casey you're here. Oh, no, that, that's all right, Sergeant. I'll, I'll tell him myself. I, I saw the name Casey on the orders we got, but I didn't figure you'd be related to our Casey. Now, you fellas are lucky. I got a brother in the Air Force, but he's in California. It's a long way from here. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Come on, I'll show you where you stay. Let me give you a hand with your stuff. <laughs> and I'll call your brother. You fellas must be dying to get together. I had arrived just after Chow. Most of the fellas were off duty, and I was alone in the barracks. But I didn't mind. It gave me a chance to get my gear stowed away. And I wanted to write a letter to Mary. I knew I should do something first. After all, he was my brother. I hadn't seen him in two years. I'd just come overseas. It was right. I should look him up. I was about to put on my coat when I became aware of someone in the room. And without looking up, I knew who it was. Hiya, boy. Hello, Bob. Have you seen Pop? Yeah, last week. You okay? Yeah, about the same. Well, what are we standing around for? Come on, let's go into town and have dinner. I know a place where the food tastes just like the States. Oh, well, uh, I, I got a couple of things to do. Uh, another night, Bob. Eddie. Yeah? I'm tickled to death. I, I can't tell you how happy I am. I missed you. Honest, I missed you. I'm so glad you made it. Well, made what? Boom operator. Now you're flying, too. Oh, yeah. Ed, what's the matter? Well, nothing's the matter. I think there is, Ed. Unless you're not feeling well right now. No, I feel fine. You uh, never told me about going to boom operator school. You never told me you were assigned out here. You didn't tell me I was going to have a sister-in-law. I found it all out from Pop. Why didn't you tell me? All right, Bob, I'll give it to you. Give it to you straight. I didn't want to. All my life, it's been Bob this and Bob that. Well, once and for all, I had to make the break from both you and Pop. Yeah. Eddie, I know how it was with us. Pop gave me more than he gave you, but I was just as unhappy about it as you were. Think of it this way. Maybe I need it more. Right now, I only know one thing. You helped me. What? How? Just by being my brother, I guess. By being there. You're helping me now. Just being here. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Look at your job. Boom, operator. You're going to refuel my ship. Even what you're doing in the air is going to give me strength. 
I never figured you might be unhappy when we were kids, Bob. Well, you had everything. That's the trouble. Nobody ever let me forget it. What are you grinning at? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you know something, Bob? I'm glad we're both here. I didn't think I'd be, but I am. What do you mean you didn't think you would? Nothing. Nothing. Things couldn't be better. Listen, you, you got to tell me all about Mary. Sure. But, but do they have the stakes in this place in town? He's my twin brother, and I guess his features are as familiar to me as my own, but that night, I know, I saw him for the first time. Everything I'd felt in my life about us and Pop up to then had just been one side of the coin. He envied me. All his life, he'd envied me. He needed me. Well, I guess we needed each other. And it had all worked out. Despite all our mistakes and misunderstandings, it had worked out. I'd rather do my job than any other, and he felt the same way about his. So we had our jobs, and we had one another. I guess maybe you learn a little bit more in the Air Force than just how to fly a plane or to take care of one. Stand by for hookup. Come on, Casey. Lower the boom. Hey, Bob! Who's that new joker upstairs in the KC-97? Eddie, don't mind these clowns down here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hold your speed. All you guys, everybody, relax. The flying Casey's are taking over. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Right now, plenty of former servicemen are discovering the truth of that slogan. They're taking a look at the new advantages available under the Air Force's liberalized re-enlistment policy. And they're signing up for a profitable, interesting tour of duty with the Air Force team. You see, the new Air Force policy offers a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments, plus a paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested. And listen. Even before you enlist, the Air Force may be able to guarantee you technical training in critical skills. In some cases, this guarantee can be made even though you've been out of the service for more than a year. So remember, veterans, regardless of your former service or how long you've been in civilian life, you'll do well to find out about the new liberalized reenlistment policy of the United States Air Force. Talk it over now with your nearest Air Force recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.